Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Depending on who you are, my guests either have an insanely entertaining show or not. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going with entertaining. I Me like too. Sam, yeah, right? Yeah. Sam Rell and uh, Joe Mackey. And uh, Joe, I, we learned something about you personally I think explains a lot. You're from uh, the same town where Penn State is. Yeah. And uh, was Jerry Sandusky in your life as a child? <laughs> uh, I, I met him one time, uh, like a, when I was a little go? kid. Oh, when you were a little kid, you met Jerry Sandusky. <laughs> <laughs> and now this is you now. That, that, that came out wrong. Edit, edit that out. Um, like, I, uh, met, I met Jerry Sandusky as a little kid. No, and my, this is me at 30. My brother was a sports reporter, and he had a football day camp. And well, he, oh, what wow, a great reporter is... he was. He missed, he missed a really big story. <laughs> Is, this he is was a regular life. Woodward and Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had this football day camp, and we all thought he was the greatest guy ever. Like, I, <laughs> How savvy. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I worked Top at notch his camp. <laughs> Jeez. I worked at his camp every year. Did he really? Yeah, he yeah. did. He was recruited by Sandusky. Yeah. Oh, my God. No. Never noticed a thing. No. In the NFL for seven years. Never saw a guy do steroids. This guy looked the other way. This is a perfect guy for the mafia. That's exactly who you want. Do you, what do you I think guess. of Michael Sam? What do you think about it? Uh, he hurt himself at the combine. He had a yeah. really bad combine. But it so. was predictable. I mean, we yeah. talked about this. I mean, at this point, was it bad enough to where if they drafted him now, it's obviously affirmative action or something? You know? I don't know. It's obviously because he's gay if they draft. Was it that bad? No, but I, I think you're. it's going to be a unique situation if anyone wants to take him in the third round like people were saying he's a third round draft pick yeah now but you're saying that's that's not the case now he's a fifth to seventh round wow. draft pick based on you know the the, the times that he put up you right. know 491 in the 40 for a guy that's who's insane. i mean again i could do that you know, i mean you had <laughs> You know, Jadavian Clowney ran a four four seven unofficially. But he's a defensive he's, end. He's, though, defensive right? end. He's yeah. six six. He and ran a half. four four Clowney. Yeah. As well, a defensive uh, end. Officially, it was a four five three. But wow. And initially, the unofficial time was four four seven. Right. And he's two hundred and seventy pounds and six six and a half. That's this amazing. guy is two. This guy plays the same position. Right. As Jadavian oh, okay, Clowney. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But he's, and he's six, that much slower. One, no. 250 pounds and he ran a four nine so he's well, he's not uh, and and the drills that they had him do because he is small they made him do linebacker drills where he's dropping into zone drops and trying to you know swivel his hips and and get underneath balls and and <laughs> Swiveling hips and getting underneath balls. <laughs> that didn't sound. That Something, sounded a little bit. From the Sam Dusky He was well, swiveling well, like, his hips like Sam, getting under a, balls. Sam, you're a big football, a uh, big uh, basketball fan. Yeah, big I'm a basketball Knicks, fan. Giants, big Knicks. Yeah. And, you know, you've got this guy on the Nets. And here's like a dumb question. You go, you're a big basketball fan. What do you think about Jason Collins? Look, if he's great, I want him on my team. Yeah, what is there to care. think, right? I, I mean, I, at this point. The Knicks suck. Give me a good gay yeah. jump shooter. I don't care. I don't care if If Richard Simmons could could run a good pick and roll... Put yeah. them on the team. Yeah. I'll, I'll happily root for anyone if they're good. I can't root for. It's hard to root for the Knicks. I don't like their players. And that's yeah. the point, right? I mean, yeah. you're a big Knicks fan. Have you ever seen? Are they could, could they be playing worse basketball? This is the I worst mean, year I've ever watched. As and a you're fan. from Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I grew up watching. I, I've never seen a worse year because this is there was no hope other years, but at least they had draft picks they could rebuild. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they, there's no hope. Terrible. Right? It's pathetic. Well, what is worse, well, the, that or watching uh, Joe on an off night? Uh, I would watch Joe because at least uh, I get to laugh in the back of the room. Yeah, yeah. I think Joe's just at, your your demeanor itself is sort of funny. Like oh, I, well. I don't think you even need to say funny stuff necessarily. And he doesn't. I mean, he no. goes off the demeanor. And that's what he does. You know? I, I, I find you entertaining just to kind of look at. Joe, I watched your, I watched your act. Clearly, the problem is this avalanche of funny stuff you're saying. Oh, uh, I'm very funny. Come to this show and see how funny I am. Well, give us good. another give us another dark. Darker joke that you think you could get away with on radio. Oh, okay. Well, it would be apropos for what we were just talking about. Um, uh -oh. well, <laughs> what was that? Oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell it. If, I hope you guys like this, <laughs> this joke. Because, uh, well, uh, my gay friend said to me, Joe, you could never understand what it's like having to tell your parents you are gay. And I responded, you don't have to be gay to tell your parents you are gay. <laughs> so I told my parents I was gay. <laughs> Then I, see what it's like? then I told my gay friend, you'll you'll never know what it's like telling your parents you are gay, then telling them you're not really gay. 
<laughs> then your dad's like, I think you were right the first time. <laughs> I write, I write okay jokes. Every time I <laughs> you think, see, that's a great joke, and you think the problem with today's generation is an attention span. Like, yeah. you know, they, they, got, they got to listen. Like, in the old days, they listen. A lot of times they want it quick. Yeah. 140 characters, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's getting worse, and also, you know, you got a, you got a lot of, uh, in the clubs especially, you got a lot of foreign tourists coming in that don't speak the language right. so well. So right. it's like it's like they That's might hard. not understand the nuances of what you're that saying. That happened at Caroline's yeah. last night. There was all these Russians in the front row, Didn't and, they, and, and they're whispering the punchlines to each other. And I was like, "Yeah, this is a good idea. Maybe <laughs> maybe get a translator at the front doors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they don't speak the language. Put them front and center. That's a yeah, great idea. And I'm sure it's perfect in the translation. <laughs> the joke is perfect <laughs> in the translation. One of the guys brought his own soup. <laughs> he brought his own soup. <laughs> that was right. I've never seen that before. One time, Christ. one of the funniest things I saw Co actually Colin do on stage. Was they had a deaf interpreter at a gig once for this thing, and he said a joke to bomb, and he went up to the interpreter and hit her on the head and said, "Is this thing on?" <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, Mike B Bruschetti, you're a comic. Uh, I think a lot of funny one-liners. What I, do you think of Joe? I think you and Joe are similar. In a I, lot. I, I love Joe because you know why? It, his first joke I loved. The second one was great because it's a lot of wordplay. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, thank you. There was wordplay. Well, yeah, it was, yeah. Like, it, was a so, it was two sentences. There was no, a lot no, of wordplay. No, but it was word. I love that kind of stuff. It's like Bob Newhartish. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob Newhartish is the direct opposite. He did a lot of pauses. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean... Uh... Bob Newhart's famous for the exact opposite. No, no, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm sorry. My, my mistake. My oh. bad. I'm sorry. Uh... What do you think? Have you ever seen Mike's act, Joe? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have to check it out. I, I appreciate oh, right. I appreciate that he likes it. Uh, yeah. No, I yeah. do. I thought it was really funny, man. Oh, thank Thanks you. Stuff. Yeah. How old are you, Joe? Oh, uh, me, I'm 34. Yeah. Looks young, though. Yeah. yeah. Very he does boyish look young. features. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. Sam, because you're younger than 34, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, so what, when do you think you'll pack it in? Uh, <laughs> I mean, did you give yourself an age? I mean, I don't think you'll have to, but um, do your parents have an age, like, like where they say, listen, you're going to have to stop doing this? Well, you, the thing is, I've been working a day job. What do you do? I work for Viacom and Human Resources. So I do a full-time job and Wait, I do... So if someone... But he's quitting in like the next month or two. Oh, yeah, that's good. I've been saving money. I'm trying to like, trying to do it so I'll have enough money that if things don't go well for a year or two, I'll be okay, but... but wait, if someone if something doesn't go wrong at Viacom on a human level, they go to you? <laughs> no, I'm like a... I'm what, do like, you, what do you do there? Uh, I, I, luckily, I don't have to deal with too many people. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm in charge of uh, uh, staff records. You're kind of like the guy who burns the building down in office space. <laughs> That's not true. I don't know how, that, don't know how those fires we gotta start. Take, we got to take a break. We'll, we'll figure this out. The Audio Line Show. Back after this. Welcome back. The Audio Line Show. Sam Morell and Joe Mackey. And uh, so th now, again, the show is every Wednesday, you said? Every, every Sunday at 9.30. Every Sunday at 9.30 at yeah. Caroline's. Yeah. And it's just called uh, the, the Sam and Joe show. We put yeah. a lot of thought into that. Yeah. So Lou Ferranda called us. He's like, I got a genius idea for you. <laughs> the Sam and Joe show. Like, that's a good idea. And I'm Perfect. like, genius. That's good. <laughs> so you guys are basically the MCs. And yeah. you bring them guys. I would love to, maybe I'll do one. I'd be I'd love to have you, be great. Yeah, it'd be good. Because, uh, you know, I like you guys. And I think this will work out. I really want Joe to get out of that Viacom job. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's done. He's wrapping it up. I think. Are you wrapping it up? I hope they're not watching. I haven't, yeah, I haven't told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could go south. I I got, <laughs> nobody from Viacom's yeah. watching. I'm yeah. uh, well, now, Sam, do you have you you do you make a living from comedy? Yeah, yeah. How long have you been able to do that? For? Like um, like two years. Maybe? You should be proud of that, man. It's very yeah, difficult yeah. to do. You're in, are you still in your twenties or close to it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's being able to do that at that age. It's a stress. Then you're a success. Yeah. You know, you're you're doing what you love and you're making a living out of it. Yeah. Joe hasn't made it there yet. No, no. <laughs> and I'm a better comic. That's the thing that really hey, gets me. You know what? You're, you're, days like this, you're happy the business is backwards. Welcome and, uh, to the business, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop your whining about who's better. <laughs> uh, well, no, we're rooting for you. We're going to the, the, the Sam and Joe show, Caroline. Now, what do you guys do? Now, did you, you, say, you just said you were on the road for three straight weeks. Yeah, yeah. Different places, St. Yeah. Louis. I know that, that, that gets... Have you been to Winnipeg yet? That's always the one. That's I the, haven't done much in Canada. Okay, that's the hump, the Winnipeg gig. Yeah. I talked to certain comics. If you've done the Tuesday to Sunday in Winnipeg, that's when you really 
But listen, if you're out there, you did what you did, yeah. St. Louis, you did... Uh... I was at Crackers in Indiana. <laughs> it's, uh, have you been there or no? Oh, no, I'm just, I've been to Crackers. Oh, I'm yeah. say a perfectly named club. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, listen, we got to roll. Thanks for coming on, guys. Guy, come back come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you an open invite, all right? Oh, Thank you. It. And then take advantage of this. Good yeah, luck tomorrow when you're trying to help the people at Viacom. Okay. <laughs> the Sam and Joe Show. Back after this. Artie Lang Show. Thanks, guys. Thank you. The Artie Lang Show. Weeknights on Audience. Only on DirecTV.